What is going on guys, I'm Crazy Pickle and welcome back to another Skyforge video. Today we're gonna talk about another support class which is named Soundweaver. Sounds a little bit weird, but it is what it is. So it's another support and it's a really, really good support which we're gonna talk about it right now. All right guys, let's get started and we're gonna start with the abilities first. All right, again, basic attacks. First of all is Notes of Pain. Deals X amount of damage to the enemy. Has 40% chance to restore energy. Notes of Pain and Notes of Agony must play in sync with the Equalizer. If the Soundweaver plays them out of sync, they deal three times less damage and do not recover energy. Activates Companion's attack. So this is the Notes of Agony. It's same thing. It deals X amount of damage and has 40% chance to restore energy. So what you need to do is, in order to play in sync, it's pretty basic. You start, for example, with the nodes of pain, which is the blue one. Left click on your mouse. You start with the blue one. You can see the equalizer plays on your left. When it switched to purple, hold your right click, which is the nodes of agony. When it goes back to blue, you're going to hold your left click again. And then just keep going like that, keep going like that. Every time it switch colors, switch the notes you're playing. That's how you're playing in sync. Alright, moving on. The next ability is the amplifier. Places an amplifier that can play a rhythm of strength, rhythm of courage, and inspiration, and fiery solo. The effects work in 5 yard radius of the amplifier. Has 2 charge levels. Place an amplifier in front of the target or sound waver if not target is selected. Places an amplifier in front of the sound waver. So basically you can tap it or you can hold down to place an amplifier. Basically, it's it's I think it's more of a personal preference who's do you wanna use it how. But me personally, I'm using it. I'm just targeting myself and then I just place the amplifier so it's front of me. If I want to place the amplifier here, I just place it here. And then if I want to place it here, I'll place it here. So basically that's how I do. It's easier for me that way. And yes, you have uh, up to three amplifiers because of the one of the passive, the, which is the concert equipment. The Sound River can summon up to three amplifiers to the battlefield. When a fourth one is summoned, the first one disappears. Amplifiers have a cooldown of five seconds. Okay, so now why we need the amplifiers? Moving on to the next ability, which is the Rhythm of Strength. Deals X amount of damage to all enemies in 25 yard cone in front of the sound waver. The amplifiers play Rhythm of Strength for first 10 seconds. Allies deals 30% more damage and enemies takes X amount of damage per second. The effect gets weaker after that. Allies deals 10% more damage and enemies takes X amount of damage per second. Playing the same rhythm again consume two times more energy. The Sound River automatically gains all positive effects in the rhythm. Only one rhythm can affect you at a time. Moving on to the next one. Rhythm of Courage knocks back enemies in 5 yard radius and deals X amount of damage to them. Amplifiers play Rhythm of Courage Damage to allies is reduced by 30% for the first 10 seconds, and enemies takes 30% more damage in the area of the effect. The effect gets weaker again after that. You allies um, damage to allies is reduced by 10%, and enemy takes 10% more damage. Same thing, playing the same rhythm again consumes two times more energy, and you gain all of that. Only rhythm can be affected out of time. Same thing, the inspiration. Uh, at least the last part that playing same rhythm gains uh, again consumes two times more energy automatically gains all positive effects and then but the first part is disorients enemies in 10 yard radius preventing them from performing any actions amplifiers play rhythm of inspiration for the first 10 seconds allies ultimate abilities and divine weapons recover two times faster enemies are slowed down by 70% and their damage dealt is reduced by 50% in the area of the effect. Enemy characters are unable to dash. The effect gets weaker, so it goes to um, ultimate abilities and divine weapon recovers 30% times faster. Uh, slow down, enemies slow down by 30%, and it, uh, their damage dealt is reduced by 20%. So moving on to the last ability, which is the fiery solo. 
the sound waver starts playing a powerful rhythm that combines the effects of rhythm of strength, rhythm of courage, and of an inspiration. These effects spread out from the amplifiers like the other rhythms, but their radius is greater and their power is increased by 10%. So meaning every amplifier that gives you that first 10 second bonus, which is 30% here and 30% here, and then all this uh, 70 and 50% here will be increased by 10%. So it's going to be 40%, 40%, and then 80 and 60 percent. The melody can last up to 10 seconds as long as the sound weaver plays correctly. They are immune to damage and fireworks erupt around them, dealing X amount of damage to enemies. The rhythm is interrupted if three mistakes are made. The sound weaver automatically gains all positive effect of the rhythm. Once the rhythm ends, the allies that have been affected by the bonus will be immune to it for 60 seconds. Moving on, Finishing Strike, which is the final chord, deals fatal damage to the enemy available when the target has a small amount of health, restores an extra amount of energy, which is pretty good. Moving on to the talents right now, the first one is the Music of Sphere, which is the Illyrium 9 talent. Rhythm of Courage now restores 1.5% of maximum health to allies every second for the first 10 seconds. The effect gets weaker after that, restoring 0.5% of the health every 2 seconds. So problem with this, because before, the first time it came out, it was 3% first 10 seconds, then I think 1.5% um, after the 10 seconds, because it got nerfed because of the PvP, of course, people was complaining about that, so they decided to nerf that. And because now it's affecting both PvP and PvE, that's kind of a bummer. But right? what can we do? And that's actually we're going to talk about, when we're going to talk about bad and the good stuff about Soundweaver, we're definitely going to mention all the bad stuff and basically all the good stuff. All right, moving on to the next one, which is the sound wave. The Sound Weaver gains a new dash, dash distance is increased by uh, 215 yards and it activates a sound wave that travels in the direction of my movement and deals X amount of damage to the enemies. Improvisation. If the Sound Weaver is playing notes of pain and notes of agony in sync with the equalizer, they can gain the improvisation effect for 5 seconds. While the effect is active, notes of pain and agony deal double damage energy accumulation rate is increased two times and companion's attack has a chance to recharge instantly. Concert equipment, we already talked about it, the Sunweaver can summon up to three amplifiers to the battlefield when the fourth one is summoned, the first one disappears, amplifier have a cooldown of five seconds. And Crescendo, which is basically power of light or power of uh, whatever the alchemist uh, support aura, increases damage dealt by the character and their allies by 20%, but the one cool thing about this one is that the effect works within 12 yards of the character and 5 yards of the amplifiers. So meaning that when amplifier is active, let's just put it right here in front of me, when you stand right here in that area, blue area, you will get that support aura from the sound waver. So basically, if you cannot be close to Lightbinder or Alchemist, you can always get the support aura from the Amplifier because if you put it on the boss and you have to be up close to the enemy, you will always get the support aura no matter what. And yes, uh, I think that's all. The PvP abilities are the same as PvE, which is bummer and I don't like that. Let's actually talk real quick about this part right here. The two stages of how to put the Amplifiers. So basically, if you tap it, when you hold, when you target the enemy, if you tap it once, it will put it on the enemy. If you hold, if you keep the same target and you tap it again, it put right next to you and it will put on the left or right side of you. So kind of a, this uh, triangle movement. But what you can do to make it a little bit easier, you can just tap it on the boss, target yourself, and then put the amplifiers in the place you want it. Or how close you want it. You can also utilize players in your team using F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, F7, F9, F10 buttons, depends how many people in a group, to 
place the amps on them so you can do that too but again if they're going to be very close to each other amps not going to drop exactly on the same spot where they are but second part if you hold the target or if you target the target <laughs> okay that's funny and then you hold to put the amplifiers it will always put the amplifiers in front of you the easiest way for me to do it is just maybe target the boss first target myself and then just put the amplifiers in the places i want it that way keep in mind it's always gonna put it the amplifier right in front of you now let's talk about the equipment gear artifacts so what i'm using as support sound waiver of course i'm not gonna use that weapon it's just for the purpose of the video so if you don't have any special weapons like this uh, kala or jinx if you don't have those you can use just a simple purple weapon that's fine because uh it's not gonna be as good as let's say alchemist and light binders if they have a, like a really good weapon and you don't have it uh you can use support or a power weapon as well the jewelry and gems are the same sets as i used for alchemist and the light binder and the artifact for the support will be the viper wristlet so that one is a really good one it's basically i think everybody's using that one if i'm running as a sun weaver to do my daily directives you know just simply run through daily stuff i'm using companion build and i will actually leave the link in a description for the video of the sun river companion build you can if you wanted to you can go and check it out maybe in the future you can work on it because it's really really insane really good and really efficient to run stuff like daily directives squads group missions uh, regions whatever and for the symbols what i'm using as a defense that's basically what i use you can switch between a divine intervention or protective shell it depends on the content you're running but basically this is what i do and we have also three um symbols class symbols for the sun weaver obviously every class has three symbols so we're gonna go for the sun weaver striking opening summon amplifier stuns targets for 2.5 seconds where it lands pulling them towards and dealing X amount of damage in the area while also restoring 10 points of energy to the Sun Waver if it hits at least one target. The same target cannot be stunned and pulled to the amplifiers more than once every 20 seconds. Next one is the Hymn, I believe it's a Hymn of Swiftness. Activating any rhythm removes control effects from the Sun Waver for 6 seconds and grants immunity to, th to them. It also increases movement speed by 30% and protects against 30% of incoming damage. So reducing damage by 30% and movement speed by 30%. Really good. And increasing movement speed. Acoustic resonance. Activating a new rhythm within 12 seconds of the last one will reduce the cooldown of the ultimate ability by 6 seconds. The effect works only in combat. And yeah, so that's basically what I use for the supporting part. If I'm running again daily stuff, my directive, squad mission, group missions, all of that, that I'm using my fully companion setup right here. Basically the same, only the emblems of destruction changes, then berserker mode. Uh, chain of distraction and i think the crushing or i'm just running that and of course the d1 weapon will be the integrator transformer uh, for the support it will be uh Mechavan's guard you can switch uh this uh divine abilities if you want it usually like if you don't have anything extra it's gonna be divine healing for you and then willpower and maybe here is like i don't know verdict or if you don't have anything extra like that probably just a verdict because this one comes from the temple of deeds yes that's basically all for the gear and i think uh we can actually moving on to the good and bad parts I believe i mentioned everything i forgot to actually mention about the weapon so usually if i have a twin weapon special weapon legendary weapon then the kala is the kiss of death is the best weapon at the moment jinx is also okay but because we don't really need the creed chance anymore from this weapon the kala is the best weapon right now this out of the way let's talk about the good and the bad parts i'm gonna start with the good parts you know what on my opinion and that's what i think sound waver is the best support class in skyforge don't get me wrong alchemist lightbinder they're also really good in certain ways but sound waver is the best on my opinion the reason why it's because first of all you don't need to have a really high might to buff people because all of the buffs that you give 
as a sound river they all already like the base bonus so it's 30 percent every 10 seconds on strength uh, 30 and 30 on the courage and then 70 and 50 on the inspiration and of course it uh, goes down a little bit but it's always the same so it's not like you have to like oh i need to have a big amount of might in order to give you a big boost or something like that and then the uh, fiery solo is also really good it also protects you at the same time like there is not much else i guess i can say it i mean it's really you know class that are free that you know you don't stuck in a certain positions you can be pretty much anywhere but keep in mind that you can only be not more than 50 meters away from your amplifiers if you're gonna run off 50 meters or more or like 51 and, and more then your amplifiers will disappear so you have to place them again that's kind of a one downside which is makes sense because before i think the range was basically unlimited so they had to nerf that down which is really good 50 feet a meters is very big distance so i don't think that's the problem and again another good part that you know it's a class really kind of i have a big freedom so you don't have to be exactly stand in specific spot all the time like as an alchemist or light binder so that's a really good thing as well and basically the buffs in general are really good so you can you know play around with the specific strategy which buff you're gonna use for certain situations depending on the situation as well so that's kind of a also really good thing and it's really easy to learn and is a it is a fun class to play not just during the raids that you can support uh you know your teammates but it also really good class to play and do the daily content as your directives squad mission group missions and if you have the companion build it's insane you can fly through missions like it's nothing of course it depends on how strong you are at that at that level but it's still it, that, that build is really really good so if you don't know it, if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link in the description. So go ahead and check it out and see if you're going to be interested. But that's the, the best, I think, set right now to run daily content at least. So, OK, I think that's basically all for the. Oh, actually, no, there is not at all for the good part. There's another good part about the passive ability crescendo that I really like. And I already mentioned that earlier in the video support aura any class or any teammate that as long as they stand in on your amplifier they will get your support aura as well which is really good so you basically can be 49 minute meters away from your amps it's still active and then your ally or group member stand in there on your amp and they will get that support aura buff while they stand in there so that's a really good part i like dashes all right i think that's basically all you know who knows about the sun river that you know that you know all the good parts but that's basically what i see it at the moment and this is what i kind of like and more of a like a generalized things so if you have certain specific good things that i don't know please leave them in the comment section down below i will definitely read it and i will you know i would really appreciate that as well so moving on to the bad parts one is the bad part that i don't really like what they did is they nerfed the music of this fear and i get it you know a lot of it was really op in pvp when it was a uh, normal the first time it came out but then they have to nerf it the problem that i have with classes that have the same sets of abilities as the pve or pvp it becomes it becomes a problem because if you're nerfing the certain ability you're nerfing everywhere it's not really affecting that great if you're doing a PvE content. It actually will help a lot, specifically during the like, hardest fights. 3% is not a lot of healing. I mean, it might seem like it's a lot, but it's reality it's not. Because bosses still hits way harder than you re receiving 3% every second. You, they need to kind of uh, make abilities or start making future classes that either has two set of abilities one for pve and one for pvp or make the abilities work in two different ways let's say this this amount works only for pve and this amount of percentage or whatever it is works only for pvp i know it's a lot of work i know it's a uh, you know a lot of coding and all of that but hey you already have classes like that that have the one ability for both sets 
but they work differently depends on the mode you're running. So, and that way you can actually nerf exactly what you want. If it's really OP but for PvP, you can nerf that part and leave the PvE part in the way it's supposed to. So that's kind of a, my big problem with this new class is that they don't have two different set of abilities. That's kind of a main big problem about the music of Sphere. It's a 10,000 Illyrium 9 you have to spend to get this. Like, come on. And yeah, I think that's basically all. Uh, I don't see anything else for the bad parts. If you know something that I, that I don't know, please again, leave this that stuff in the comment section down below. Share with everybody. I'm really, really appreciated. So yes, I think I will give the nine out of 10. Um, the reason why is just because of the Illyrium nine talent and all the abilities that uh, works same way as the PvP, PvE or PvP one. So that's kind of a bummer, but yeah, I would, I would, I would give 10 out of 10, but we're gonna go with nine out of ten. So, and again, I didn't. I think I didn't say about the light binder. So light binder definitely eight out of ten as well as an alchemist. So it's gonna go eight out of ten for the alchemist, eight out of ten for the light binder, and nine out of ten for the sound weaver. So yeah, that's basically all. I hope I didn't miss anything. Even if I did, let me know in the comment section down below, of course. And yes. As always, if you like this video, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and activate notification that you're not going to miss new video I post. Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server. All the links you can find in the description. And until the next time, take care.